Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr CLEP. It's Monday the 12th of September and we've got some new mods. We've got quite a few updates and I'll be honest, the first two I'm going to read out have just popped onto the mod hub since I started recording. So, the old grain mill by Bartson V3 and the forage factory by LSMT modding team have just popped up. Um, but the potato processing by Harrison Fork, La Coronea, uh, that the change log is immense i mean absolutely insanely long uh if you're looking at doing that or updating the map you, you really do want to have a read of that um the massive vote oh that does also say on that coronea that a new save game will be required uh yeah requires new save game to be able to enjoy all of the changes um they've added in pistachios red lettuce um New Holland refills, hydraulic oil and copper sulphate, new trees, almond and pistachio. I mean, it's tons of stuff. It's crazy. So, yeah, you probably want to have a look. Uh, the Massey Ferguson 8700S by Blauer, the old cow shed by DMI 20mm Normandy, the Fent 900S4 by LS Agra Ole, the Bednar Terraland pack by Nico Pixis, and the flat bottom silos by Flying Dutchman. Uh, also, the Grain Quid Pro by Missy and Vulcan 95 have all had updates. So onto the mods in front of me we have got the Robert Hydropale 1 by Paolo 5090R. This is 17.47 megabytes download. There are seven slots each. There are two. We've got the GT and the GL. The GL is a standard, I say standard, uh, it's a bale shredder. It does say mulcher but your bale shredder and that would put directly out of a chute. And then the GT has got um, a, uh, a blower, which has got a 300 degree rotation on it. So that's the difference between the two. These are designed to hook up to telehanders, wheel loaders, skid steer loaders, uh, anything with a front loader or a front loader attachment or anything like that. Um, so yeah, they're not a three point link mounted, but they're designed to attach to all of those types of things. So I've got one on a telehandler and one on a front loader. Um, they're designed for round bales or smaller bales. It does say in the description for these, Except round bales up to 1.4 metres in diameter and cubic bales up to 0.7 by 0.9 by 1.4 metres in size. I tried to put a larger bale in, it was a hay bale to be fair, it really didn't like it and it didn't come up with saying what the capacity of it was, whereas these ones have worked no problem at all. I've left that one out to show you how I put them in because it's actually, it's not that easy. Um, if you've got the bales up against something, pushing against something might help, but um, you know, it is what it is. So, these you will find under tools, under animals. The Hydropel GL is 12,500 and the Hydropel GT is 14,500. Slot counts come down to one on both of those. Both only require 60 horsepower, so a nice low horsepower requirement if you're running uh, skid steer loads and things like that. Works out really nicely. So, we've got options on connectors on the back. We've got a Manitou, a standard telehandler, front loader, Stoll. JCB, skid steer loader, so if you've got specific ones for the attaches, skid steer loader, wheel loader, and back to mine too, and I think it's the same on the other one. There's no other options other than those. Um, same with that as we go through the various different options to attach it with. So, what I've done with this one, I've already put the bale in, and what we do have, so we can open cover, which removes the chain at the front. Now I found that makes it a little bit easier to put the bale in and out, and we'll see why in a moment. We've got our raisin hoe, a lot of that's, that's actually on the telly hand itself. But the chute is down to the right, and we can unload here, and it just blows throughout the bottom. So if you're going alongside a trough or a feed area, that will just put it out at the bottom, and you're good to go. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's what that one does. I'm just looking at the options. But it tells you bottom right what your capacity of your bale is, and how much you've got left, which is very nice indeed. Um, this one has got the chute. So if we go with um, R1 and right stick side to side, we've got our rotation. So you've got 300 degree rotation, not 360, but 300. Otherwise you'd be spraying it back at your vehicle. So it will go either side. Uh, and then we have also got under L1, R1 and right stick side to side, we've got the adjustment of the shoe that way. So if I put it out like that and you want to blow it more at the floor, you can adjust the nozzle for where you want to actually blow it. So if I open the cover now and put that down at an angle so we can hopefully get onto the bale the bale will roll forward out the way but when you get to there and it's showing bottom right that you've got capacity what I did at that point if it will do it 
it's kind of called it, you can see it's kind of got it. I put the cover on, I closed cover, so I put the strap on and it lifted it no problem. However, you do need to go quite high to get it to roll back into place. There we go. Um, it won't stay in there. If I tip that forward, that bow will roll out. So you just have to be kind of careful how you go about, do it, how you go about doing it. But then unload for doing your bail blowing. It says, oh, that's interesting. Why is that not showing the bail capacity's gone? Why has it done that? That bail has capacity. What's going on? So it's decided to do it because it, it flipped it up. Try and get that to roll back into place rather than flip it. Because it's not registering there's a bale in there. Come on, how high does that need to go to get that bale to go in? Because realistically, there's not really another way of doing it. I don't. I don't. I mean, like I say, other than going up against the wall to press it, it's not the most it's not intuitive but helpful of <laughs> of systems. But Does that push it in. There we go. And now it'll roll in. Right, so now it's showing that there's a bale in there. Let's try that again, shall we? Not ideal. Uh, so, unload here. That's better. So that will start to do whatever it's going to do. And then we can adjust our nozzle. And we can also adjust it up and down. If you want to blow the straw further in, further out. Wherever you want it to go. The big arc. So there you go. That's the uh, Robert Hydropower 1 by Paolo 5090R. Moving on from there. We have this. Now this has got me a little bit, I say puzzled, not necessarily, maybe. This is the BGA uh, network distributor. This is by Disturbed Simulations. It's 3.13 megabytes download. Um, there are two in this pack. There's a standard and there's a, an Unreal. Now the one thing it doesn't say in the description which I think it maybe needs to, is what it will work with. Now it does say, maximize your returns from the outputs of your BGA through improved distribution into the power grid and a more comprehensive purification of methane. This is reflected in improved payouts, double standard rates, but distribution takes longer to complete. So the two versions are included. There's normal, which is 75,000 to buy, electric charge 20,000 kilowatts and methane 20,000 liters. Um, the processing speed on that would be 120,000 kilowatts per month and methane 60,000 litres per month. The Cheaty version is 150 grand to buy. Capacity on that is 80,000 kilowatts, methane 80,000 litres and the processing speeds for the electric is 480,000 kilowatts a month and gas methane 240,000 litres a month. So there's a big difference between the two. But here's the thing. If I go over to it now and click on here, that's the one there. So your electric charge and methane, you see the recipes there, 100 to 200, 100 to 200. So it's doubling your output. So it's making better use of your electric charge and better use of your methane. But that one there says incoming materials. So you have to have electricity and methane coming from a BGA. So these won't work with the standard BGA because the standard BGA is this one here. I've placed one. And the only outgoing product is digestate. So it won't work with the standard BGA. It has to work with a modded one. Either, I would say, by Disturbed Simulations, because Disturbed Simulations has got, um, what have we got in the pack? Uh, industrial BGA and the mini biogas plant, both by Disturbed Simulations. So I would, I would assume, and then possibly, along with other ones that are modded, you need something to be able to bring electric charge and methane into this mod for this to work. So what I've done is the biogas plant that's here on the Western Wilds does produce methane. So I've set that to distributing. When we tip over the hour, that should put the methane into here. If it does, I'll turn that on and then I should get double what's been put in and make more money on it going out. So yeah, that's the only thing I would say with it. It, it, it probably needs to say in the description, otherwise, like I say, I'm kind of looking at all the options and thinking, okay, why is this not working? What could it work with? If you're new to the game, 
biogas plants and all the biogas plants that are available, the modded ones and the modular ones, it's a minefield of information. It's a minefield of stuff to get your head around. Now, I'm assuming this is going to work. So what I'm going to do, it's not. It's a nicely made mod. I think this is also part of one of the other Disturb Simulation mods, but this has been brought out as a separate entity. So that's the standard in-game biogas plant, the 99 kilowatt. It's not going to work from that, but it might work from the one on here. So I'm just going to speed up time momentarily past the hour so hopefully if we go back to it we should have methane in there there we go so the methane has now come over from the one on the western wilds and it's now sitting in there so if i click that on on the hour again that will sell that but i'll get double that's the theory behind it so it should sell it and i'll get double now the same with electric charge so if you've got a biogas plant where you've got an outgoing point this one's only got methane and digestate but if you've got one that does methane digestate and electricity set your electricity to distributing and it will come over to this mod and you can do the same with that so it basically just doubles up it's, it's just processing the system the system better um so yeah that's what it's supposed to do uh, it'll be a case of filling around with various different mods and seeing which ones it works more effectively with. Like I said, it's a nicely, nicely made mod. looks great. And like I said, these are under build mode productions. There's your standard biogas plants on the end there. If we scroll across, we should get some. There we go. So there's your standard one. Uh, I said there were sevens, didn't I? Um, 75 grand or 150 grand if you want the one that's got much bigger capacity and much faster processing speed you can go for that one if you want to um, just doubles the price up to do it so there you go that's the BGA network distributor by Disturbed Simulations next we've got these this is the Lizard 25DU trailer this is by FSG modding 4.72 megabytes download they're five slots each now this one's not I'm having a right day of it um, these ones have also got me a little bit puzzled um, I think it might be a mod it says gooseneck tipper and flatbed trailer for all your transportation needs so there's two trailers gooseneck tipper and flatbed it gives the information on both then at the bottom it says universal auto load will fit 15 large square bales or 120 small square bales now I'm assuming that's a PC mod the universal auto load because I've been through all the various different configurations on both these trailers there's nothing for auto load on console so I'm assuming the universal auto load is a mod that you can add on PC which will allow that to become an, an auto load bale trailer again like I say that is an assumption but I can't find any other any other alternative for it uh, these are goosenecks it does say they will attach to uh, compatible with base game pickups, trucks and various mods. As you can see, that gooseneck is hooking up to a th uh, fifth wheel attacher on a lorry. It will attach the pickups and various different things, but it's working quite nicely on there. The tipper trailer has got an 18,100 litre capacity. This actually works as a, a transporter as well. So you've got a flatbed with straps, as you can see. But this whole thing tips up and you've got rear ramps that come out the back as well. So you can use it as a transporter, which makes it um, a very handy piece of equipment. So you will find the tipper under trailers, just there, the 25DUT. That's 36 grand to buy slot count will come down to one. You can have a choice of Continental, Trelleborg, Michelin, Midas, Regestein, back again. Nothing within those options. Then we've got main colour, so pretty much everything on this palette, you've got a standard and you've got a metallic. Of everything on there so you can go through and pick what color you want for that chassis color same thing we've got metallics and we've got standard colors so whatever you want your chassis to be you can pick and choose and mix and match and then we've got a license plate option on there as well and then if we go down to bale loaders yes that's where, it was, where it was isn't it there we go the duf also 36 grand flatbed like that again we've got a choice of a continental trelleborg michelin Midas, Fredstein, Bats Continental. Same thing with main colour. So if you go flat like that, the deck stays still shiny, but it changes the outside of it. If we go for a metallic like that, it does metallic on the whole lot. If I go for flat on that, the deck stays shiny, but the outside changes to a flat. Then chassis colour, same options, and licence plate option on there too. So as far as this one goes... Unloading, we've got tip side rear, tip side grain door. Unload here, nice smooth animation. It's quite a wide trailer. I would say a pretty 
low centre of gravity on it, so you shouldn't have too much trouble with tipping. It doesn't have a rear trail hitch, but our lights are there with our indicators. Suspension underneath. Very nice. So I want to show you this one, because I just thought it was really cool. Um, though the way this one tips and works is pretty cool. If I can get hooked up to it. There we go. So, straps. Fantastic. Well, now, this one's got the same thing. Again, I didn't show it, but uh, L1 and right stick up and down, we can raise the hitch. So whatever you've got it attached to, you can raise and lower it to get the level you want. Then if we go R1, we've got extend ramps and raise bed. So we raise the bed, it does that. So if you've got something on it, you want to just tip it off. You can take the straps off and just tip. It could be bales or pallets, or if you've had enough of whatever's on there, and lift it up and off it goes. But then we've also got ramps we've got ramps we can bring in and out obviously we've got on a, con on a playstation controller I've got the joystick so it's doing both at the same time so I bring the ramps out then raise the bed up so there drive on whatever you want to drive on lower it back down ramps away straps on and off you go that's really cool I like that as a trailer I like the options on it and I like the fact you can use it as a transporter as well as a flatbed and you know, very nice indeed. So that's the Lizard 25DU trailer by FSG Modding. Next we've got this, the Case IH Magnum 8900 series. This is by Case Arius Modding. This has got a whopping 68.38 megabyte download. Uh, it's 22 slots. It's got a ton of tyre options. Now I'm not going to read them all out because there are loads. I think under one set it Continentals? There are 14 different sets of tyres within categories. There's a lot. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we get in there. But interestingly, with with a high slot count, there's no doors or windows or anything that open on it. It's a nice looking tractor, and the base model's not that expensive either. You'll find this under medium tractors. There it is, 58,900 for the base model, which is pretty cool. So if you want it just like that, 170 horsepower for 58,900. That's pretty cool. So under Michelin, I'm no, not content, under, under Michelin, like I said, I'm not going to read them all out, but the first few are actually quite cool. Well, all of them are actually. So we go through the first set. You see it's got inverted, inverted two, inverted three. Then we move on to singles two, so two wheel drive. Now with this one, there's an option further down. I'll show it now. It says two-wheel drive axle width. You can adjust that. So if you've got it on the two-wheel drive, that's what that one does. If you've got it on the four-wheel drive, it, it won't do anything if you adjust that. Um, so we go back to there. So singles two, then we go for a whole set there. Onto three, then four, and it just carries on going. This one goes right the way up through, changes different wheel sizes, widths, axle widths. I'm sure it's 14. 11, 12, 13, 14, then back to singles. Yeah, there's a load on there. Uh, and then under Trailer Borg, we've got singles, rigels, inverted, and back again. Quite straightforward. Continental's got a few more options. And then back to there. And then Lizard, this has got quite a few as well, if I recall correctly. So it'd be a case of having a play around, having a, a roll through and finding setups and things you like. Oh, there you go. Then we're back to there again. Then we're back to Michelin again. Cool. Fenders, yes or no? Uh, why has it not been a fender on? Oh, there we go. Had to be inverted for the fender to appear. Oh, okay. Uh, then we've got extra front lights. Mirrors. On the top of the cab, we've got beacon light, yes or no. We've got front options, weight bracket, 500 kilo, 1,000 kilo, rock box, or no. Uh, we've got a quick hitch on the back, so we've got a standard three point on the back. We've got a quick hitch attacher, if you want that on there. And the axle width we've already looked at. Monitors inside, we've got no. It adds a KPM3. It adds in a B Vantage, field view, or all. It's like 990 for all three, and they do actually they look really cool inside. Then we've got engine setup 170 horsepower, 214, 239, 261 for the 8940, then 261 for the 8950. 
that could be gearing maybe or a higher top speed it doesn't actually say that it still says 24 miles an hour 261 horsepower is saying is the highest it goes i'm better check on online actually just to make sure that is the case hmm what does it actually say okay anyway uh and then we got main color option so this is for the exhaust so we're going to stainless steel chrome or black it's what is what it comes standard with rim color silver or black and then we've got a license plate option on there as well so if we hop in start it up beacon lights horn i have to say the the detail and the crispness of the the tires the tire compounds and it looks very very good it's very crisp and neat like I say, L1, R1, L1, R1. There's no options for opening doors, windows, or anything like that. But if we go to here, with the extra monitors inside, that's the three monitors. So that's the first option on the monitor. That's the second option on the monitor. That's the third, and that's all of them together. But that's um, it's pretty cool. Nice well, track to that. So that's the Case IH Magnum 8900 series by Case Arius Modding, which brings me on to the last of the mods for today. This is by my good friend Schultz Modding, part of my Discord server team. Um, this is the buildable feed lot pack. We've had a couple of conversations already since I started doing this because I had a couple of questions. So this is 1.48 megabytes, that's all. What's very cool about this, there's a cow pen, the base plate of a cow pen, and the cow pen will hold a thousand cows. So a thousand cows, 25 grand, five slots. That's amazing for a thousand cows. Now the point about this is it's supposed to be a feed lot. It's like a beef lot. So where the animals come in, either they're, they're brought in to fatten up or they're brought here in between places. You can have a whole load of these set up if you want to. The feed lot, feed lot comes um, as one point. Then you've got all these fence sections you can do separately. So you've got the fence sections with the big posts here. We've got the chute, loading chute there. We've got fence sections like that without the bigger posts. We've got fence sections that have got um, sort of side bits on them. Here, we've got gate options. Now this has all been set up. I've just kind of done it roughly separately by me. We've also got a tyre water thing. Now that's just decorative, but you can put that in if you want to. You don't have to. The same with the chute. You can set your configurations on like with these however you want. Your feed trigger is at this end. Uh, your feed trigger. Your dialogue box is at this end. So for your thousand. Now this will take an absolute humongous amount of feed as well. Um, if we go in and have a look here and go up to our animals, you'll see I've got 114,995 litres of feed in there. And it's barely even touched the sides. So if you have got a, a thousand cows in here, you can put a ton of food in. Um, straw it will take. Now it is saying milk up there, and it's saying slurry. So Schultz Modding messaged me to say that you can, if you if you want to. It says, where are we? Uh, it does both slurry and manure. You just need to place an extension for both. So what I've put to the side there, I've put a manure extension and I've put a slurry extension behind. So when you've got your, your bedding in there, it will do manure. I don't know if it's, yeah, we've got a bit in there. And we should have a bit of slurry in there, hopefully. Is there a bit in there? I'm not saying it's empty. Hmm. Okay. Maybe I didn't do the extension. That could be why. But anyway, regardless, it will do both. And it does also say you might even try to find a silo extension for milk and give it a test. It wasn't Schultz Modding's intention for it to do that, but it might well do. Because you're putting in one for manure and one for slurry to get the manure and slurry out, the fact it is saying milk there, although it's saying zero litres, there are a couple of milk extensions tanks. So it might not be a bad idea to, you know, I haven't tried it, but I was already had this set up and going when Schultz Modding messaged me. But potentially you might be able to get milk out of it. But obviously that's not what it's intended for. It's intended as a feed lot, a beef lot um, for your, your beef animals. Now I will say, I placed this one on my concrete area and I, I've done a bit of landscaping in so much. So I put the earth texture in underneath. I put a bit of grass texture in there. Um, but if you can see here, it's raised up a bit for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. However, 
when I placed the second one down to double check it, it placed it perfectly on the regular ground. I don't know why it did it over there like that. Um, so it's put, placed it really nicely, flat, level, no problem at all. So I'm not quite sure why it did that. And I would think when I put the straw into this, it will sit flat on the ground. For some reason, it's left a little bit of a lip on that one. So as far as the actual mod itself then, <clears throat> if we go into our build mode and we go to animals under cows, that's where you'll find the cattle pen. So like I say, 1,000 cattle, 25 grand, you can't odds that. It comes with that grid already on. I'll show you that in just a second. So you can place multiple ones of these right next to each other if you wanted to. Obviously it says overlaps, but you can turn that off and you can overlap them if you want to a little bit. So you could put two or three of these together and then fence the whole lot in. Or you could put four back to back or whatever and then fence around the whole thing with potentially two, three, four thousand cow capacity, which is absolutely mad. On this end, that's where you've got the hide grid. So once the grid's in place, that helps you for putting your fencing in and get an idea of where the animals are going to go to, where the furthest is. That's the sort of nav mesh for the cows. Um, you can sh you can hide that grid, turn it off, and that goes away. As far as the rest of it, if we go to decoration, if we go to others first, that's where you're going to find your tyre tank. The tyre tank is two slots, and the loading chute is two slots. So it does say overlaps. You will find certain points where you can place them. Since up, so like I say, you don't actually put water in them; they are decorative. And the same with the loading chute. So the loading chute. You can put in yeah, wherever you want, since I'm sure with, with regard to your fencing. The fencing itself. Once I get to it, um, it's all one slot, I think. Yeah, it's all one slot anyway. And then with the fencing, you've got your usual. That's the price for one bit. And then the further out you extend it, the more expensive it's going to get. It does say if you use this one with posts to do it anti-clockwise. Oh, that's interesting. That's not given the option to rotate it. So if you've placed your pen at an angle like that, your posts are going to be at an angle, aren't they? Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, so it says if you're using the one here with the big posts, you want to go... Ah, oh, right, I was wondering, you know. That's much cleaner and tidier. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want to go anti-clockwise because it works better with the posts, is what it says. Uh, now, you can just place those if you want to. Uh, we've got the one there, which has got... Now, the other thing I was going to show you as well, when you place these, if I put it right up next to it, which is what you might want to do if you want to do different fencing, it comes up saying collides with another item because it's colliding with the previous fencing. So you either want to go with one set of fencing or if you leave a little bit of a gap, it's fine. Um, if you want to use two or three different sets of fencing as you go along, so that's the second set. And then the third set is those ones there. I'll leave a bit of a gap there. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll put a, we'll put a gate in. Let's put a gate there. Will that work? Please work. There we go. Put the gate in there. And then we'll go with that set of fence in there. Does that work? There we go. Oh, no, that same collides with. Okay. So it might be you need to use certain sets. Still same collides with. Cow's not going to get through that gap, to be fair. There you go, so that's the other set. So whichever way around you want to go around doing it, if you want that on the outside or you want that on the inside, depends on which way around you want to do your fencing. So if you want the, the flat panel outside, inside, but again, play with it. You, you know, you, if you put four of these back to back, then you wouldn't enclose it like that. You'd do a much bigger enclosure all the way around. That is working much better out here on the grass. I'm not quite sure what happened. That may be something to be aware of. If you've already got something already placed down, for some reason, like I said, when I put it down, it left this gap, but it also did this with the fencing. It's got a kind of double, it's put double sections for some reason. Whereas on that bit over there, it's, it's placed it perfectly. No worries at all. Um, but as I've already shown you, I've put a couple of gates in and fences and you can set your lot up however you want really. Um, but that's pretty cool. I mean, even if you just bought it for the lot, just to have a thousand cows on it. But the fact you've got that modularity and you can kind of set yourself up. The cows aren't going to go through these walkways. That is obviously more for aesthetics. I keep saying aesthetics. More, yeah, for looks, isn't it? The look of things. Um, than anything else. But it's very cool. I like it. Uh, that's the buildable feedlot pack by Schultz Modding. I am just going to double check something before I move on. 
Uh, I just want to do another update of the mod hub just to make sure nothing else has suddenly appeared, which is that's what can sometimes happen. But as it stands, that's it for the mods for Monday the 12th of September. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.